Sorry, completely inappropriate. And that's uh, uh, so glad you recorded that. I get to cut it out. Yep. And actually, I'm going to start the show with me saying I get to cut it out. Ha ha ha. You don't get to know what I said. This <laughs> <laughs> is evil laugh. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Caleb. <laughs> and I forgot to rearrange my screen. So if all of a sudden Ross just jumped to the top, that's why. Uh, I normally do that pre-show and just, you know, sandbagging tonight. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. Uh, I can't remember which time zone Caleb's in, if he's in Mountain or Pacific now, because I know... Uh, Pacific time, currently. Yeah, like, <laughs> currently. You guys don't do daylight saving times, you just yeah, jump time yeah. zones. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's my favorite, like, little-known fact about Arizona, especially when you're in Utah and you just drive south, but you go back an hour. Like, wait a it minute, makes I went travel s- interesting sometimes, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, my dad and I were in southern Utah, God, almost two years ago now and literally drove south and we're like oh crap we're early like <laughs> find a coffee shop chill out um yeah this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road we're very I, it's been raining here all day so if it feels like the energy's down it's like i am pounding the caffeine like here too it has been I'm, dreary as dreary gets <laughs> plus russ I, I don't know if i told you this yet uh after the knee surgery i now have my own barometer uh and so like when it rains my knee hurts oh okay. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, some people call that getting old. But if you've yeah. had no, I'm there. If you've had some kind of bone-related surgery, then yeah. you know, you know. That's why my, my favorite Mike Birbiglia joke is when he got into his mid forties. He was like, and people talk about being over the hill. He's like, oh, there's natural causes. I can see them now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you want to start with <laughs> your toy? Yes. Okay. I, we, There's no we, news, so we're skipping the weekly roundup here, but I have been playing with the V8 Defender 90 for the last week. <laughs> it, it is magnificent. It, it's so well done in every way. So I had a, I think they call it P400 D90 in the fall, which is the mild hybrid in line six. And it was good. Um, it, it was a little lazy and clumsy in the powertrain department just because the thing is like you know 5600 pounds um but it was you know a neat product and then the v8 is just a totally different animal so we do have to address the price elephant in the uh corner here that's the 007 edition why do i Um, always grab that one because it's (laughs) it's the most striking as the brits would say so the Base Defender 90 for 2023 starts at $53,900, and the V8 Defender 90 starts at exactly double that. It starts at 100 grand? No, it starts at uh, 1078. Oh my gosh. So the one that I have test on test for this week is like 106 and change. It has a couple options, um, you know, the bigger PIVI Pro screen and There's one or two other small inconsequential items, but it is just the best. Like it's, it it has that like perfectly sorted nature to it. Like the rod quality is good, even though there's like, you know, not that much body roll, it's still comfortable and it's got huge wheels, but it doesn't crash over bumps. And it like settles down on the highway to like 1400 RPMs at speed and it's quiet and composed and the interior is great. And then, you know, you get on the gas and it's just the silliest thing ever. And it's the same engine as Jaguar, as F-Pace SVR, which I had for a week, a couple of months ago, which is just no body roll and you floor it and it just goes. This, it's the same engine. It pitches the front like to the sky. It's, it's like, it's just playful and silly in a way that something this weight and this price with four wheel drive usually isn't. And it, man, it's like, if you floor, I'm not joking. If you floor it uphill from a roll in first gear, the front tires spin like until they grab and then pull you whichever way they decide to go. Like wow. there's, it's, it's really like kind of sketchy and absolutely hilarious. 
I freaking love the thing. It's it's great. It is so well, joyous to drive, and it's so that was nimble. your <laughs> that was your first message to me was like, "This is sketch, dude." Yeah. And it, I love that it's gone from like, "This is sketch," but I love it so much. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's amazing. So you know, I pulled out of my street the first time and and like rolled onto the gas, and like let it sit at maybe I don't know 2,500 RPM and floored it, and was like you don't go back in your seat. The whole truck just pitches upwards like a boat <laughs> and it's hysterical. And it, you know, you can do that at any speed too. Like you can do that at highway speed. <laughs> so you're in a hundred thousand dollar SUV <laughs> that gets up on plane. Okay. It's a boating term, you know, you <laughs> rise up and you, oh my God. Shoom, right over our heads. That was an airplane <laughs> joke. <so. laughs> Matt, Matt, where's Matt Farah? Get him back yeah, on right. here. Uh, no, so the, the D90 is the best. If you can afford one, go out and buy it right now. That's the end <laughs> of my story. Highly recommend it. Did you just Ferris oh, Bueller? Like, no, I did not say that. I said, go out and buy it as soon as you can. Man, I'm telling you, like, you know, you think something that, that's that heavy is like clumsy, but it, it's just, it's nimble. You know, the turning radius is amazing because of the short wheelbase. The back seats are actually like usable. You know, there's no storage. Um, and this 170 inch long, Defender can tow almost 8,000 pounds, which that's I mean, it's a lot of weight. 170 inches? Nose to tail, 170 inches hmm. plus the tire, you know, the spare tire mount on the back. The wheelbase is, wheelbase is. A Ford Transit wheelbase is only 174 inches. So I, it was why I was like, wait a minute, like that's. Okay. The wheelbase on the Defender 90 is 101.9 inches. Okay. Not- it is it's short and it's great it and it, it looks so dorky and i fucking love it <laughs> <laughs> so ross's recommendation is everybody should buy a defender 90 v immediately <laughs> immediately and if i won the lottery it's probably the second vehicle I was jlr gonna is gonna be super happy with you <laughs> oh they are they are yeah no like I, you know i had a discovery for a week last summer and it had all of the the infotainment problems yeah you hate you know, it and i <laughs> shat on it so i have no shame like speaking my mind but this well you, just... you off-roaded the f-pace you love this thing they'll, they'll be in a good mood with yeah you. i did off-road yeah the, taking the f-pace in the snow off-road was was fun so so, so that's that's what i've been doing as a transition i took a fun photo at work today uh i forgot to tell caleb that i share my screen so that way i don't have to go back and edit later um this is my suburban Oh God, <laughs> that's hysterical! Look how small my suburban is. Oh, uh, to the audio listener, I parked a suburban between two of the transits today. One's a mid-roof, uh, all all-wheel drive with uh the Quigley lift. Uh, it's called the Q lift, and, and it nest. has Ko twos with a roof nest on top. Which the roof nest on top adds like another foot and a half. Mm-hmm. Like the if you can see right here is the normal top of the roof rack so like the roof nest really does get that That's much more and then the van on the right is a high roof uh extra long with the standard uh just roof rails and the air conditioning unit but like my suburban i it's never looked like small <laughs> like it, <laughs> it's tiny I, I i can't imagine that the the one with the the roof tent is, is rather fun to drive with all the body roll either it's oh, not bad that uh the, the q lift comes with um Bilsteins. And so it's actually, I mean, it is a Ford Transit van and it's tall and it's got weight up top. Like, I'm not saying it's a race car, but like, uh, th- I've had this one on the highway without, um, without the roof nest. And it, it was fine. It was a big, it's like, it's, it's definitely a big van <laughs> with stuff on it, but, uh, mm-hmm. no, it's not, it's not all. So, uh, my, my update is that I am ready to ride my mountain bike again, except I'm not allowed to yet. So yeah, Coming I've, soon. Been, I've been doing, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing Three physical shows, therapy right. and I went and saw the ortho and he was like, hold up, what have you been doing? <laughs> Flexibility and mobility. And I was like, no, he was doing strength. And he's like, you're going to stop that <laughs> more. Like you need to chill. And I was like, can I ride my bike? And he's like, not yet. You can get very lighter. The weird part is like the the physical therapist and the ortho like I feel like if I got them together like they might fight like it's. <laughs> I mean, the most important part about surgery, other than 
getting it done is preempt. So yeah. Take your time. yeah. So, but in fun news, I am going to Overland Expo West. So see you there. I will see Caleb in person before I will have ever seen Ross in person. <laughs> Man, we're going to start doing a drinking game. It's like, if that doesn't get mentioned on the show at some point, you do a shot. Well, because it's funny. <laughs> I know, I know. When is that? So when are you, when are you guys going? Oh, uh, that's a good question. It is the 19th. 19th, I can think we can set up. But I don't think the show opens until the 20th. Of June? May. Of May. May. Oh, that's soon. Yeah. I'm on the road. Uh, I'm. I will be driving a van. <laughs> uh, I think our. I don't know where our first day goal is, but the second day goal is Flagstaff. So that's cool. <laughs> the good news about Adventure Van Company is like if we don't make a stop, like pull over. But generally, generally <laughs> the vans are prepped. They don't really want us to wreck them before we get there. Yeah. So, but no. Uh, yeah. So it should be an interesting time. I haven't been to an expo before, so. Uh, and I did, I did message uh, Richard and Ashley since we were just talking to them. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'll see you in person before Ross. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't actually reference that, but it would have been funny if he had. <laughs> oh man. You got, I mean, the four of you better get a show together while you're yeah. out there. We'll, we'll make it happen. I'll wander around. By the way, dude, I'm out of stickers. I should probably have mentioned oh. that before this point. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will send you some. Okay. And Caleb, if you send me actually i'll just send chris a bunch uh, yeah i can person. take yeah. them in person yeah <laughs> i need to order more actually there's probably gonna be a lot of people that'll be like you were on the show and you yes. were on the show if like, anybody yes. listening does want a sticker email us yeah what is it, what's our email uh off the road again podcast at gmail.com email us there and i'll send you a sticker i think that's the right email i don't know i never write it to myself i know i just click <laughs> off on google okay so email us and we'll get you some stickers so yes, caleb, off the road again podcast at gmail <laughs> so uh so caleb what will you be taking to overland expo west um i will be driving our gladiator up to expo this year um and then i think we're also taking our lj um Oops. that's that's what's that's what'll be at the booth um we'll also be taking our prospector xl but that's just for towing so i'm cool. digging for the lj <laughs> photo right now it is my it's favorite truck prospector man no yeah ignore the prospector um the lj is the best thing <laughs> it's the first and last time anybody has said ignore I, the prospector literally. for this thing though this oh, thing is yeah, so yeah. badass okay that's it yeah that's like iconic in the lj world <laughs> literally yeah uh, it, it, it's a super unique truck and it just like puts a smile on your face every time you drive it like it's not fast by any means and it's mm -mm. you know it's it, it's just a it's just such a fun vehicle to drive around and this is the safari top sets it apart for sure yes it's so good <laughs> yeah, lj's are the best that the wrangler has ever been yeah yeah and this has the proper setup so i cool. i think i started following is it great tops that makes that mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i started following them just based on like i have no i don't have a jeep i have no desire to buy a jeep i'm not putting a top on anything but i followed them because of this jeep i was like yes i would so good there's there's a couple other cool tops like the american convoy is a it's a safari version like soft top which is really cool they just they don't make a lot of them we'd love to find one if, if anybody if anybody knows of any out there you just let us know man what was that again american convoy American Convoy. Oh, American made Convoy yeah. yeah, it came up. Oh. <clears throat> that, oh my gosh. Is it all going to be low res images? Somebody. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Is. Please, like, please have a high res version. Is that too high res? <laughs> <laughs> nope, that works. Yeah, That's actually kind of too high res. Well, yeah, because then it like, it's super high res, but they like sync it down. And so it's like, when oh, I that, go to share, it's like 200 by 300, but it was like 9,000 by 7,000. I'm like, dude, that ah! is fucking awesome. That looks like an old Defender. <laughs> so good. Plopped onto a LJ. Well, and it has the steel wheels too to go with it. Like it. Yeah. Perfect. That's so good. So, so good. it's got to be their corporate Jeep because the, even the license plate says convoy. Like, <laughs> I, I think they make them out of, out of the guy's house in Phoenix, which is, which is really cool. They're, they're really low volume and, I, you know, I think it's made to order, um, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I, I just love the look. They're perfect. It's so great. The windows are huge. 
Mm -hmm. Like you don't really think about improving the greenhouse on a Wrangler because you can just take the top off. Like you don't, but like, that's great. Well, and you can just roll the side up too. Like that's the yeah. best part. Is that screen or is that plastic? I think it's a plastic screen. window. Mm -hmm. If it Either had way. a screen option, I will, if you made the order, then maybe that. Yeah. You, and you could also just go, <laughs> and just, go yeah, and just do it yourself. <laughs> I mean, that is how you can do anything to any cheap. Yes. Top. you just yes. cut it um, was so my favorite part was i parked my I, when i had my wrangler or my tj uh i was in uh downtown tampa with it and i remember locking the truck and being like why did i do that because <laughs> yeah, i just cut, much. cut the soft top apart and, yep. yeah no. oh yep <clears throat> i found a white one. Oh no this is gonna now be oh and it did the thing it was a huge fascination image. too small uh the fascination <laughs> It's Chris's their fascination. Oh my gosh, give me one I can share. They're so great. Uh, I think Luai, uh, who Richard Nashley uh, stayed with in, in Saudi Arabia, has one as well. Real, that sounds about right. That was yeah. the, it looks it looks like it belongs in Africa. Like it looks great. And sometimes they call it safari. Here's the thing: if we pool all of our money that we have collectively, <laughs> we can get a good LJ. They've gotten so expensive. The prices are on the rise. It's it's crazy. Like it's hard to find a decently priced one with low vials that hasn't been molested yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's exactly it. It's pretty loud. So um, I, I just I want to move over to a slightly different topic um, that has become a recurring theme as of late. Are you and the Montero? No, <laughs> Caleb's so, truck. <laughs> yes. So. The, you know, the question after we talk to a lot of people about all the awesome stuff that they drive for their job or their hobby um, is like, okay, but what do you drive? What's your own vehicle? And you are part of our ever-growing community <laughs> of, uh, of Montero owners and uh, adventurers. So tell us about this truck because it looks awesome. So it's a 1998 Mitsubishi Montero. It's a winter package, which has the rear locking differential, uh, factory adjustable suspension, uh, heated seats and whatever else. Um, I've had it a little over, I think almost three plus, three plus years, I believe. I got it in 2019. Um, it, I bought it from Sean Kendall in Central Oregon. He's a Montero specialist, um, like the only person I would trust to work on a Montero, basically. Um, Guy's fantastic. So I bought it from him. He rebuilt and restored it. Um, it's got a new motor. All the maintenance has been done. Um, it's on 33s. It's got four nine gearing. Um, I just put another set of Coney shocks on. It's got King coils. Um, it, it's great. Like it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it's, it's set up for pretty much like anything you want to do while being, you know, fairly affordable and, and not over the top, you know, like it, it does everything and more. So, mm -hmm. so the, the factory <clears throat> adjustable suspension, what was mm -hmm. that? And then. Yes, so no, like it's... in the nineties. In the 90s, Mitsubishi had, they're kind of like ahead of the time with, you know, like random silly tech, like the 3000 GT, I think had it. And then like some other stuff, um, but you could like literally toggle the the dampening with a button so you can go from soft, medium and hard. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah oh like they were, the, they were ahead of the, they were ahead of the time in that, you know, um, but it, you know, like after 20 plus years, it's obviously kind of worn out and tired. That's why I switched to Coney's. They're just mm -hmm. a better, it, it, it's, it's a better suspension, you know, set up. And it works well. So are the conies made for the Montero or is yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's, it's Coney too much in the off-road world. Yeah, it, it's funny, like ironically, because like I bought another set of conies and then Matt, my boss, bought like two other sets of conies. He bought one for his uh 901, 911, and then he got some <laughs> conies for for our uh, for our other G Wagon <laughs> that we have at work. And it's just like, you know. They're, they're really yeah. quality shocks for kind of air appropriate vehicles and whatnot. Um, you can adjust them, you know, which is you kind of have to take them off to adjust them, but you can still mm -hmm. change up the dampening, which is really cool. Um, they're just fantastic and they have the most travel and they're technically like the biggest size of, of the Mitsubishi shocks that are available. Okay. And I mean, as we know, more surface air, more volume to displace yeah. fluid and pressure mm -hmm. is generally better so yeah that's interesting yeah I, I, this might be the first time coney has come up on the show actually because it's 
like we were saying, you know, we always go to Bilstein and all the, mm-hmm. like, oh, I mean, all that stuff. It, it's know? never come up with any of the rally race cars. Like it's never, oh, Tony. that would no, be that's... like the one spot, like race cars, but like, yeah. No, I mean, come... Montero is basically a race car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that like uh, anything if you want to drive it, like it. I, I've, I've had it way faster than it should be going <laughs> I I, As you I definitely you know one time on my way down to Phoenix going downhill I uh, raced a Lamborghini and won so <laughs> it's fast <laughs> did the Lambo know you were racing uh well they were going definitely 100 miles an hour <laughs> and you know Montero passed it so oh my gosh allegedly allegedly, allegedly. Oh. Montero passed it yeah allegedly um okay well that's awesome and it looks awesome and uh yeah it, it's fun to hear more people going to montero after the last like 10 years have pretty much just been a wave of oh let's get forerunners you know and it's I don't know, it's the exciting. montero the, the montero community is really interesting like you know it's it's unique and it's quirky you you find really genuine people and and i think to to own a montero and, and be a part of that like weird lifestyle you, you have to really want it because like the vehicle is gonna like break you time after time because you're just like so frustrated with it yep. like it's it's somewhere between like toyota and land rover reliability but like you get you get so much better people like in that because you're right in the middle and it's i don't know it, 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 it's awesome yeah you and the parts like availability Jeff. is neither <laughs> the, yeah the parts availability is not there like you're you're searching through like amiyama and and you know whatever else trying to find yeah. stuff like it's it's it, it, it's a nightmare yeah mm-hmm. I, I i tried that in the via cross world i had a via cross <sighs> briefly so cool i didn't i just didn't like i spent as much time hunting for parts as i did working on the thing mm-hmm. which is not saying good things because i spent a lot of time working on that thing so i just didn't have it in me so uh, you're it, brave funny. souls it, it's funny too because it's like you, you have to earn it like you know spending your time at the junkyard and whatnot it's like i don't know i, I find it fun like it's it's <laughs> really enjoyable like walking around the junkyard on a sunday morning looking for parts like it's, it's fun yeah grab yeah. a coffee go look for parts yeah, yeah. exactly their own. that sounds like a david tracyism <laughs> coffee hunt for parts uh i don't he... <sighs> I was gonna make a joke about him storing his food outside, but that's oh yeah, that was that was <laughs> David. If you're listening, we're still questioning that <laughs> hard. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, tell us about Adventure Imports. Yeah, so Adventure Imports is the exclusive importer and distributor for Max Tracks into Plate, and we strive to bring in premium, uh, you know, four wheel drive products that the U.S. is lacking. Um, we've been uh, in business like six or seven years now, I believe, um, you know, Adventure Imports was started by Matt and Laura, uh, Matt Scott and Laura Chain. Um, they're the owners and they've, you know, been around the four-wheel drive industry for quite some time. Matt, Matt, you know, has been a huge role um, and, and partner in Overland Journal. Um, you know, a lot of people probably know him through the Overland Journal podcast. Um, you know, it, Adventure Imports has just always been, I guess, a, a big leader as far as quality and innovation in the you know, offer an industry. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful to be there. Um, it's, it's pretty cool to, to, um, you know, support people and support their adventures with product that, you know, really, really makes their adventures go further. Dude. It's funny that you, you say like <laughs> that, because like, it's so when I'm talking to people about off-roading their transit bands, they're they which they do, like, they're going to yeah. do it. Um, but like the one thing that they always come up, they're like, what if I get stuck? And I'm like, traction boards. Like you have this giant van and a great big rack on top. Traction boards will be perfect for you. Like mm-hmm. Max tracks 100%. will work. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, much less room for failure or injury than than a winch. As and much it was, as it's easy to rely on a winch, it was mm-hmm. always. Uh, I'd ask Emmy Hall. I was like, "Winch or traction boards?" And she's like, "Traction boards every time." Like oh, yeah. she, she's like, "If I have to choose, <laughs> traction boards every time." But if I don't get to choose both. Mm-hmm. Emmy uses she uses her so much with her Miata it, it's awesome like you know I gotta I gotta I, I gotta witness her you know at Rebel Rally I was I was on the photo team for Rebel Rally and, and we were there Matt and I were supporting the event and it was awesome and glamorous I gotta I gotta witness her um doing a recovery with Rebecca and it was awesome because Nina Barlow and, and Terilyn came and, and they were helping them get out and it, it was just it, the teamwork was amazing you know um Rebel is such a cool thing. Oh, let's see. 
Oh God. There's buddy. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Was so was that your first rebel that you went to? That was my first rebel. Yeah. It, it was awesome. Like to to be on the ground, you know, with I guess with a lot of the women that you talk to kind of like over the years is, is really, really cool. You know, the, the coolest part about rebel to me is watching the confidence of, of these women from the beginning of the week where they're, they're really timid. They're still figuring it out. They're, they're trying to figure out like they, they know they can drive because they're there. They've made it there. You know, they've, mm-hmm. they've done all the training to get there, but it's like, they're, they're super timid, you know, like during the event because it, it it's intense and then watching their confidence throughout the week just progress like drastically. And, and to see the teamwork between different teams as well is, is awesome. You know, like it, it's such an amazing event. You know, Emily Miller is one of the most amazing humans that, that puts it on and runs it. Um, seriously, like I, she doesn't get enough credit, but she's like amazing. So <clears throat> Dude, the, my favorite episode is we had Rebecca Donaghy and Sedona Blinton come on and talk about how they actually navigate the rally and it was like an episode of ross and my's head just like every 40 <laughs> seconds they'd say something else and we'd be like what like just yeah. the stuff they do to navigate through stuff, the time speed and distance stuff and mm-hmm. just them charting them and like the one time uh, rebecca messed it up because she didn't have the map unfolded and the checkpoint was on the other side of the map and like just of course i'm gonna tell a story rebecca where you (coughs) made a mistake i apologize um but yeah no like i've ever since i first heard of the rally i was like i i want to go spectate it Mm -hmm. you should you should like if you can make your if you can make it down to glamis on the last day like i highly recommend it you know to me i think glamis is like i it's crazy like i'd never been to glamis until rebel it's 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 massive like it, it's crazy. Like I, I don't have any desire to like take my car and then like drive in there. Like I, it, uh-huh. it, it's insane. Like shout out to like, seriously, like shout out to them, like for, for doing it. You know, we were fortunate this year to, to, to have a contingent, a contingency program and, and kind of, you know, throw in money, I guess, to, to, for the, for the teams like running max tracks. And it was, it was awesome to see, you know, Nina Barlow and Tara Lynn on top, you know, it was, mm-hmm it was a, it was an awesome podium and we're, we're stoked to see the money go where it went. Um, you know, like Max Tracks Adventure Imports was the first sponsor, I believe six or was it six or seven years ago that Rebel has been going now. So yeah, we were the first nice. sponsor and it's, it's I been it's awesome. six. <laughs> yeah, six, but it's, it's just like awesome to, to, you know, continually support such an amazing event. <clears throat> yeah. It's the best. I mean, universally praised, you know, yeah. everybody loves it. Everybody loves people that do it. It's, it's really Truly there special. Stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, Rivian, that Rivian's heavy. Like I, I feel bad for them, but you know, it's, it's really heavy. that's its that's its they biggest flaw is the dunes. No one forced them to drive it. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, good on them for taking the chance, but I don't know. That frontier in the background also looks pretty nice and it weighs mm-hmm. about 2,500 pounds less. It's <laughs> Lennon Sedona truck, yeah. <laughs> It's like it's literally yeah. lined up with all of our guests. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I know. We are the unofficial podcast of the Rebel Rally. <laughs> when, mean, when are you guys going to get Emily Miller on? Like that? That's a that that'd be an awesome episode. She's on the I list. Know. I I literally I think I emailed Nina two years ago, and she, she's yeah, never got she's busy. busy. She's, she's very, busy. Very busy. There was that's we true. actually got a, one scheduled date on the calendar, and um we were like set up to record and I called her and the, the lady at the shop was like, she's not here. <laughs> she's out. <laughs> I was like, I guess it's not going to happen. <laughs> someday, someday. Yeah, some, someday, someday you'll get a hold of her. Someday, someday, someday. Someday we'll be famous enough. To... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. The best part of this. Oh. So I like the behind season, the behind the scenes posts of like the, the chase teams because <laughs> Dude, you were hanging out on Earth Roamer. Like, yeah, it was it was Mission Control. It was you know, the the Earth Roamer is like, it, it's funny because most people are like, oh, I bet you never take that thing off road. Man, the Earth Roamer sure can boogie off road. Like, let me tell you, I think that that vehicle is better off road than it is on road. Like, <laughs> it's it's amazing. Like, it it moves and and you know like, 
it, it's a whole house. It's crazy. Like we had, yeah. we, had we had the whole, we had the whole uh, truck set up. Basically we we're, you know, during some of the, the you know, marathon events, like we were sitting there and we had like the iPad set up and we're watching everybody on the screens and uh, doing editing and everything else. Like it was, it, it was the most perfect thing, you know, the, I think it was, it was like day three when we were at big dune, when the, when the really crazy, um, the wind, when the wind, wind. Started, yes. oh man. Matt had like seven people in the earth roamer <laughs> just all piled in. And it was just like literally like mission control for the entire event at that point. It was, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was like, you get, Nobody it was the only, outside. it was the only place you could all hunker down and like, just be like, <laughs> let it literally, pass. Yeah, literally <laughs> like myself, Richard, Ashley, Harry Wagner, Rochelle Croft. And like, one other person I forget who like all got a hotel room back in town oh just because we're like we're we're not camping after this. If you go to the next picture, you can see what our tents. Yeah, tent Rochelle's Rochelle <laughs> standing next to the tent was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see why they opted out that night. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was it was needed being in a hotel room after that. Oh man, that is a truly like actual madness. Yeah, it was it was chaos. It was it was insane. Dude, I love the Earth Roamer so insane. much. It's it's pretty fantastic. Uh, we need to find a way into one of those. Um, speaking <laughs> of pretty insane, can we talk about the uh, the Pacific North Northwest experience with the nineteen forty five Jeep? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so that's our family's uh, that that's been in our family since I believe the seventies. Um, my great grandparents bought that and it was originally a it was used out of the school um like kind of for like their maintenance and whatnot um our family got it and then they kind of restored it um and and recently my family my parents took it over um so they've been um my dad's kind of been tinkering on it and kind of getting everything even more perfect on it uh next up is like new tires he's been redoing all the seals on it um, redid all the brakes. There was a bunch of stuff that was just like totally backwards on it. Started yeah. laughing as you said brakes. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, like literally, we we were driving through our neighborhood. I think in in December and and l- literally had absolutely no brakes. It was it was uh, it was terrifying. Um, <laughs> but it's you know it, it it's it's one of those things that is really cool to have in your family and and be able to. I guess, bond with it, you know, and, and take other people out. Like it, it's such a blast. Like, I think some of my favorite memories, you know, like ever with my dad, will just be like my dad, you know, like inviting my friends to come ride on it at like nine or 10 o'clock at night, like with like horrible headlights, but it's just, just, just to experience it and, and put yeah. smiles on other people's faces. Like it, it's awesome. Um, it That's was really funny. Cool. I was back in, I was back home in December and he was, he, he was really adamant about going to the coast. So we, we rented a U-Haul trailer and took it out to, to the beach and we we're driving around on the beach and, um, it, it, the battery kept dying on it. Mm-hmm. and we, we weren't sure if it was just like, I, we didn't know what was going on, but it ended up being the battery and had to keep pulling it out. And we just kept getting stuck Amazing. in the process, which is just, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. It builds the aura of the whole Absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Almost <clears throat> like it's having a good time too. I'd be worried if it was like reliable. I like I want it to be quirky and horrible. Like I <laughs> it adds yeah. to the adventure. Yeah, I'm all for it. What beach is that? I feel like I've seen pictures of that before. Is that is that the same beach that the uh Transatlantic Trail ends at? No, they ended in they ended in north northern California. I think that was closer to the Lost Coast where they ended. Oh um that's in that's in like Pacific City, Lincoln City area. Okay. Um, pretty much pretty much like ironically like every car commercial shot there now um when we were there uh via films is out filming the ford lightning um they're filming a ford lightning commercial and then i believe this week they're filming the v8 defender out there too ah <laughs> of Great. course you tied of it course. together yeah that, you did better <laughs> all your news <laughs> oh, Call that, back. that looks awesome that thing looks like a blast um that like I didn't really understand the charm behind those until as of late. Now it's kind of like, <clears throat> oh fuck, they look like side by sides that you can actually drive on the street. <laughs> you know, I would say, is that because Zach got one too? Like, is it because Bowman got one? Yeah, that doesn't hurt. But like, <laughs> you can't drive a rocks around the street legally, you know. So this is as <laughs> close as it gets. You can drive side by sides legally here in Arizona. Like, there's yeah. people, there's people going to the store, like getting groceries in their side by side, like. <laughs> 
I see people yes. at Costco, like there's people at Costco, like getting groceries in bulk with their side by sides. Where, Dude, where are they gonna put it? Up in New Hampshire, they have a bed. <laughs> yeah, not all seats, of them do. But up in Ma- New Hampshire and Maine, the places we go, people do that. But I can assure you, if you do that in the state of Connecticut, things are not gonna go well. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I feel like that's most things in the state of Connecticut. Like, <laughs> fuck, it's not very don't big. Mind don't mind me. Actually, maybe I should test this theory. I'll just like I have a few. You have places. a borrowed quad. Like, why not? I do, but that that is very different from like if I put like turn signals and you know plates on side by side, probably easier to get away with that than a quad. Even though probably definitely could keep up with traffic a lot better on a quad. Tell you that much. Um. Oh, I skipped the minis. Where'd they go? We didn't talk about the gladiator, Ross. You skipped that one. Oh, so l- let's talk about the gladiator. The massive you know, for, adventure. For an off-road <laughs> podcast that's been out from like 2020 through now, we don't talk about the gladiator all that much. No, we so don't. We do. It, it's funny because I feel like a lot of people have forgotten how good the gladiator is. You know, I, I never was a Jeep person until I started working at Adventure Imports. And I, I, can, I feel like I can you know, confidently say like, I, I'm, I'm really in love with Jeeps. I think that the Gladiator to me is the ultimate vehicle that I would drive around the world in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, <clears throat> it's Hello, so, Dan Breck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I build mine a little bit differently, but I think, you know, it's, it's such a capable vehicle that, you know, you can fit 37s on it with like a two inch lift. You can, um, the factory bumper with a winch, you know, factory sliders, which are fantastic. Uh, fat, like a 37 inch tire fits under the the bed, you know, in the spare location. Like it's crazy to me. It's, it's the ultimate vehicle. I, it, it'll do anything you want. So you don't really need to like re gear for 37s either. No auto. If you have a Rubicon, you generally, you don't, we re geared ours to 488s just because we knew we'd be putting extra weight in it. Um, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on what it weighs. I'm, I'm not sure at the current moment. Um, but it, you know, it's got a long range tank. It's got you know, front rear bumpers. It's got the camper. It has drawers, 175 amp powers of lithium in the rear, um, fridge. It's got, it, it literally is everything. Like we built it to go around the world. Um, and you know, it, it's still boogies and it has, you know, like you, it, it does everything. Mm-hmm. Is it a diesel or is it the Pentastar? It's, it's the Pentastar. It was, it's a 2020. So it's the first year they released it. Uh, I see. I see. Yeah. The Gladiator's good. It's kind of forgotten because everybody in the midsize segment is either like all over the Tacoma or, you know, mm. now everybody's starting to obsess over the ZR2s and the Bisons and, you know, starting to look outside like just Toyota, you know. So we're starting to see Rangers mm-hmm. getting built up and, you know, some of the new frontiers, but the Gladiator is really freaking good. It, yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, if I was to sell the Montero, I, I would really strongly consider getting a gladiator for personal use. Like it's, it's, it's so good. So what's on your automotive bucket list that you're uh, eventually going to try to track down for yourself? I, you know, like, I'd be crazy if I didn't say Pajero Evolution. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Straight to the moon. <laughs> oh. I mean, um, shit, same. <laughs> You, you know, like it's, it's hard because it's like, I think, I, I feel like my bucket list is really small because of the job that I have. I, I feel really fortunate to be around and exposed to so many vehicles. It's like, you know, there's, we have a brute next door at Overland Journal. So it's like Mike mm-hmm. McMod's brute sits next door. Um, oh, yes. We've got, you know, like at work, I've, I get to drive the Prospector XL. Like I've driven the TRX. I've, you know, we've got the Gladiator, the LJ. We have a pop top G wagon at the moment that I haven't posted oh. about. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, uh, so tell us about the Prospector. What is the experience of a Prospector like? Because everything I've read about it makes it seem like it it feels basically factory. It that that you, you summed it up. Like I, I think that the the whole essence of the Prospector it, it it's perfection. I think Dave's team at AEV, you know, has like knocked it out of the park consistently. Like like since they started, um, the the work that they do is second to none. Um, it, you know, every single product and part on that vehicle has a purpose. And if it isn't there, you know, like there was no reason for it to be there. Um, we've there. Yeah. Like, and as it, as it should be, like, there's, there's no reason to modify the prospector. Like it's, 
it's crazy. Like you can open the door and you can see, you know, updated specs for, you know, the GBWR payload, all that. Really? Um, and that's, oh, that's with 40 inch tires. That's with 40 inch tires. Oh, that um, one's on forties. It's on forties. Yeah. So Matt's prospectors on forties. Oh um, yeah. So, and, and it still maintains a factory warranty. Um, it, it's amazing. Like that truck has so much torque and so much power. I think it gets, it gets, gets close to 16 miles of the gallon. What? Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it, wait, it, is it a, a <clears throat> diesel or is yeah, it a, a Oh, it's, it's a diesel. Yeah. Oh, I was like, uh, yeah. five, seven or six, four is not getting 16 miles per gallon with that much weight, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, like it, it's funny because I think when I drive the prospector and then, you know, when I look back at driving the TRX, I think there's, there's something a little bit more livable and manageable with the prospector than there is mm -hmm. the TRX. Like the TRX is a little bit more intimidating because you sit more in it because it's, it's more of a race truck than it is, you know, a utility truck. The TRX um, just always wants to go. It, like, it does. Like there's no restraint. Driving the TRX through town is really intimidating, but there's, okay. you know, it, it just, <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so much easier to drive a prospector, even though it's on forties where the TRX is on 35s. <clears throat> TRX blue. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ours was blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I had some serious trouble with the TRX living in a city. Yeah. Know, once you get outside that. the city, it's fine but like even our highways are pretty narrow you know so Me. it was not it was it was fun to blast through like underpasses but other than that i, I had a difficult week with it we we brought ours to rebel rally and and it was used as kind of like a chase vehicle support vehicle throughout the event um and uh chris walker drove it the entire time and it was you know watching someone who's a, a you know like one of the best four-wheel drive trainers in the world you know drive that vehicle to what he said wasn't its full potential because he's like it's not my vehicle you know watching him drive it to that to that level though was like insane it's it's just cars are so capable and and you know so good now yeah it, it significantly more vehicle than i can handle yeah. you know and like i don't want to speak for all of us but i think we're at the point especially with something like the t-rex where the general public is not capable of handling that much power or that much weight you know, within within reason so mm -hmm. safely yeah it's a good it's desert a, truck it's a great <laughs> desert truck but you know if you try to stop that thing in the snow or the ice here like yeah. it's not happening not that it would be easy to stop a prospector i mean they're probably like about the same but just different yeah different mentalities <laughs> So it's interesting that you said Gladiator for, you know, around the world and not Prospector though, because I guess it's just size. Size, you know, the Gladiator fits in a shipping container, even with the way it sits on 37s. Um, you can find parts around the world. We would still consider driving a, a, a Prospector around the world. I just think that, you know, the, the Gladiator is a little bit, it's more maneuverable in town, um, if that makes sense. It, you know, and it's, it's just simple. Like there's Jeep parts generally anywhere in the world. Um, That's true. So, yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is why you don't take the TRS. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. heavy. I just want to know which journalist ended up getting getting the TRX stuck at that press yeah. event last year. Like, I, I don't know how you can get that stuck at Cinders. Like, it's not it's not hard to get. It's it's really hard to get a vehicle stuck at Cinders. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know. I don't know. Getting it stuck out there is is less damaging to a TRX than what a guy's an everyday driver did to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, it. real fast. Where is Cinders? Cinders, uh, that's in Flagstaff. Unfortunately, if you're trying to make it there around Expo, I'm not sure you'll be able to make it since there was a huge fire that just recently went through. Oh, crap. That's a bummer. Oh, what's the name of that fire? Um, I was reading about it on Expo. Actually. I don't remember what the name of the Flagstaff fire is. The fire in Prescott just got, con it's at like 90% containment, which is good. Okay. Do you guys have a fire? Yeah. Yeah. Already. It's, it's sketch, man. I hate fires. Like, sucks. Not many people like them. <laughs> Ross, have I, have I told my forest fire stories on here before? Um, I don't 
don't know, dude. We've done so many of these shows. Now. I, well, I as Isn't soon as I tell it, you'll you'll remind okay. me yes or no. So I, the I worked at a, a summer camp in Estes for two summers, and so the second summer I was out there was the Heyman Fire, um, and it was close enough that it was like camp camp sits under longs, um, and so across the valley, twin sisters on the other side of the valley, the smoke is on the other side of the that mountain, so it's nearby. Um, and so they brought all the counselors into the lodge one night and they're like, all right, we got to talk about evac plans. And we were like, okay, like, this is a little more real. Like we're actually discussing, like, it's not a fire drill. Like, it's like, I guess technically it was our version of it, (laughs) but, uh, procedure one is if it's looks like it's coming our way, load every kid into the camp vans, which there were only three 15 passenger vans. And then every counselor's car. And we drive off and we leave. That's that's plan one. If it comes too fast and we can't drive out or the road's blocked, everybody congregates on the football field because it's the thing farthest away from all of the trees. And they everyone brings their sleeping bag and then they turn on the sprinkler system and we get under our oh sleeping God. bags, say leave the water on and wait for a helicopter oh. to come lift us out of camp. Oh, geez. Luckily, neither thing had to happen, but at 20, 20 year old me, yeah, it was about 20, 20, 19. I was like, yes, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, we're, if that's our, like, that's how we're surviving this, we're doomed. Of course, you can't talk about any of this because everyone around you is like right. six to 15. Like, they don't have a clue what's going on. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway. you're, you're scaring the children. Yeah. We didn't. They're like, why is it? Why is it snowing? I was like, that's, yes, that's exactly what it is. It is snow. Yes. It's hot and snowing. Yeah. It's not nuclear fallout. Right. Uh, and then, anyways. Yeah. Okay, we, we literally, we came out of a, a, a school. We were doing something with the kids and we came out and it was just, ash was just raining down. Jeez. Like, oh, it's God. snowing. And we were like, yeah. yes, it is. Let's get on the bus. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and that's crazy. I mean, those fires we had a couple of years ago, like uh, the fires in california you know mm-hmm. the sun here was a different color and we had less light and there was like the lightest dusting across everything and people are talking about how inconvenient it is and like people are like 200 miles homes. away yeah you know it wasn't california it was colorado yeah it was colorado no. um so yeah no if anybody is out there please stay safe um, but crazy so okay so you won't be wheeling at that place <laughs> yeah won't be there <laughs> um what uh have you always been in the flagstaff area or or you stay you were from i live in prescott flagstaff. currently um i'm originally from oregon um grew up in salem oregon and um i think you know about a year ago i moved to prescott um but you know like the northwest is amazing i think I feel really fortunate to have grown up in Oregon, um, just the diversity of, of landscapes that you you're able to, to reach, um, in short amounts of time. Like, you know, like that, that right there is like an hour from my parents' house, you know, like that I'm like at two hours from central Oregon, an hour and a half from Mount hood, you know, eight or like six to seven hours from, you know, the Eastern Oregon desert. Like it's, it's mm-hmm. never ending, like what you can actually get into, um, I don't know. The the Northwest is perfect for, for exploring. Yeah. Did you grow up off-roading or you got into it later? No. Um, I think, I think the off-road thing is just like a, a, a weird progression of just, you know, like living an outdoor lifestyle, you know, like I, mm-hmm. in high school, my first car was a, a 98 Toyota Avalon and, and, and that car literally like went everywhere and anywhere and more places than it should have gone. Um, like I, I lived out of it for a summer in central Oregon, like slept in, you know, like living in the back of it, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then eventually I got like a Passat wagon and then I had a Subaru Outback that I lifted. Um, and then I realized that I needed something bigger. And that's kind of the the general progression of just like finding my way more into the off-road scene. Um, and mm-hmm. from there I'd gotten the Montero. Um, and it's just, you know, I think to me, the off-road community is really cool. It's so many people that have a passion for the outdoors and exploring and pushing themselves. And, you know, like they love working on their own vehicles. Um, and it's, it's, you know, I think it, it's cool that that's, what's always gotten me into the off-road scene. It's just the people. Yeah. That is one of the biggest through lines with all of our guests mm-hmm. is like, you know, 
everybody loves seeing shit and doing shit and going places. And, and mm-hmm. a lot of us actually love like the technical stuff, but it's always, you know, the personal aspect of it, mm-hmm. like sharing the experiences and whatnot. Well, it's always been like, come for the car, stay for the people. You know, I think that's, that's what, you know, has always yeah. stuck with me. It's like, we're here for the people, you know, at the end of the day, like, yeah, it's cool to have a car, but it's, you know, the car isn't driving itself. It's, it's the person behind it. They're the one that's building it. You know, like they're the ones you're, you're sharing experiences with out on the trails, you know, like you're sitting around them with at a campfire, like that, that's what it's really about at the end of the day. I think I'm, I'm fortunate to have so many good friends that have helped me along the way. So many good mentors, you know, a good community back home, you know, Ben and Nate four by four, you know, like amazing people who, um, yeah, like that was a four by four meetup, you know, it was like the best of friends, like, you know, like having weird niche Japanese, you know, JDM friends, you know, like all out with like weird vans and Pajeros and stuff. Like it's, it's such a blast. I don't know. I love it. Yeah. It's so good. Future no. guests of the show. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, Ben was texting me earlier to speak <laughs> about that. Yeah. I've been, I've been slinging emails. <laughs> Sling. Yeah. No, but I mean, to your point, like you guys are out deep in the mountains there and it's the same thing as like, you know, cars and coffee on a Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. You don't end up staying to stare at the same car. You end up staying because you met somebody and you're talking about random car crap, you know? <laughs> literally so, like i don't know it's like i feel like my best friends have always come from just like those you know random times it's like overland expo it's like i, I never thought i would really enjoy overland expo but it's like man i met some of the best people you know it's it, the community is really where it's at yep right the i mean community is the best because there's no other real community in which you might have to rely on no car community where you might have to rely on somebody to actually you know keep you alive <laughs> Or I help you get back to civilization. I talk on a weekly basis to a guy I've never met in person. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my! And, and in reality, it's more than wow. weekly. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's daily at this point. Wow, that's oh my god, that's funny. You hadn't processed that yet. <laughs> no, no, the dots were like, do you know what you're describing? <laughs> oh man! Oh, homie, funny. this shot is awesome. All right, uh, we're just sharing Caleb's Instagram at this point because he's. <laughs> this, this photos are Holy great. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, where is that? Uh, that's like out Hood River area in uh, in Oregon. Um, ironically, uh, we somehow made our way through a back way that we didn't realize was a back way, and went out another way in the morning and had a gate locked on us. So that was, <laughs> that was a real fun trip in the snow, but it was, it was an awesome memory. <laughs> what kind of pressure do you air down to for deep snow like that? Like 12? Uh, yeah, I start around 13 or 12 ish. Um, I think, you know, the more you drive in the snow, the more you understand the snow conditions and you just like go straight to what you should be at. Yep. Um, We've, you know, the Indeflate is a product I use quite a bit. That's a product that we sell through Adventure Imports. It's a, it's a two or four hose air up, air down unit. Um, and it, it makes my life really easy. You know, I, I'll run pressures anywhere from, you know, uh, generally on dirt. I, the Montero has got a, a torsion bar front end, so it's, it, it's not comfortable. Mm-hmm. I generally start at 18 PSI. Um, and then I, I kind of work my way down. Um, but you know, like I've gone as low as five PSI, no problems, no bead locks, no bead locks. <laughs> yeah. No bead locks. It just, you know, like oh, man, you, just have to, nervous. you just have to drive slow and, and kind of know when and, and, and what, you know, your tires are doing. Mm. Um, but it gives you so much flotation and, and, and your, your car needs it. If you're in really, really deep snow, what tires are those? Uh, I'm they're, Kumo, them. they're Kumo oh, MT 71s. Oh, Nobody runs those out here. Nobody like, runs them, but like, they're really good. Like they've, I, I really enjoy the tire. Like it, I would love a, a lesser aggressive tire. Like I, in, in an ideal world, I'd run a Falcon AT3. It's like literally the best tire in my opinion. It's, it's fantastic. It's so good. It's got great on-road and off-road yes. banners. Yes, it's, it's really good. We have it in all our work truck. I love it. It's so good. They are uh, very, very, very good, but they have, they were the, it was the tire of tires when it was two thirds of the price what it was what it is yeah. now, and now the prices have come up and they're the same price as all of the, all the you know the. But what's the best all terrain right now then? 
I live and die by Toyos, by the ATT okay. and ATTs. Okay. I love okay. them. Um, I think I find them to be more durable mm-hmm. than some of the other tires. And, you know, I live in the Northeast, all our trails are rocks. So mm-hmm. I love Duratracks, but Duratracks are too soft. Soft as sidewalls of, you know, anything. And um, I don't know. I've never KO2s. I've, I've had balance problems with KO2s. I know that's an anomaly. But Too soft. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, like, love the Toyos. I wish they had a little more deflection, but, and they weighed a little less. But I love them. We, uh, we throw KO2s on the vans at work. Yeah, but unless if you have the uh, dual rear axle, the uh, KO2s do not have the load ratings high enough for those. So mm-hmm. they get open country AT3s. Hell yeah, they do. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, the 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 Kumos are great though. Like it has it has a center tread design which keeps the the snow kind of in it. So you you know like snow sticks of snow, so it mm-hmm. it, yeah. it works really well. Um, and then the outer the outer tread void's really good. It's like you have like a two finger tread void essentially, which just like eats. And it you know it's like with the combination of of having grip in the middle and then the outer being able to mm-hmm. dig. It, it's I think it's fantastic in the snow. Clever. It's also really really good on the ice. Like I've never had any issues with it in the ice. Uh, like I'll cruise 65, you know, like on my way home to Oregon, no problem. Like the Montero is great for high because of, you know, like the rally heritage and whatnot, but it, it, it just works real. Like I've had no problems with those tires. Like I, I love them. Good to know. Good to yeah. know. Yeah. They, uh, so Ross, like, when you get West of the like Mississippi, a... you got to switch tires. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and Kumo, Kumo might have the best memes on the internet as well. Just <laughs> oh, noted no you yeah. have to have to explore this later yeah yes. say like kumo memes, kumo memes? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the kumo tire instagram like whoever runs it is is amazing oh yeah oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> of humor. uh they they are not afraid to laugh at themselves share with class please Give us <laughs> um i don't know what's actually okay this looks like it's them uh I, it's not high enough res on instagram oh i didn't go to their instagram i went oh to the Eddie's. instagram's where it's at i just google searched oh. give me one second there can't be that many kumo tire you know accounts. now that i'm thinking about it i don't <laughs> even know if kumo makes like like do they have a traditional at or is yeah it- they just released another all-terrain recently it, it looks to me like a it, it, it's like a mix between a falcon and a, and a toyo at3 or like an okay. ATQ more so. Um, Let's yeah. see if my computer loads it. The Road Venture AT52. Oh yeah, what, what it, is it looks like the Toyo AT2 and like the General Grabber AT2s. <laughs> oh man, I I'm not, I'm not sharing that one. It's too topical. Road Venture <laughs> AT51. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, noted for future reference. What's up with them and Shrek? I don't know. It's great. It's great though. <laughs> it's like you have a bunch of memes about them and Shrek. Like, <laughs> like the Valentine's Day one is I'll, you can read for yourselves, but I will read for the audio listener. It says, this is your Valentine smooth AF, which was Prince Charming thick, which is Shrek or under four foot tall, which was Lord Farquaad. Sorry, sweetie. <laughs> that's not your Valentine. It's a tire. <laughs> Lord Farquaad. Oh man, that is definitely interesting. <laughs> I'm proud and ashamed that I remember that that dude's name is Lord Farquaad. Yeah, this I is love Lord it. Fuckwad. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Farquaad. It's a children's movie. Is it though? It's all right. You you will have dodged that bullet by the time your kid shows up. <laughs> or that's it's the weird thing of like because kids movies are like cyclical so like when my oldest was born like a lot of finding nemo like and as we kind of went through like with the youngest like there's no fine there's a lot of peppa pig like it's not she's not oh. watching the same horrible shows yeah i'm i'm scrolling through their instagram now they have somebody has a shrek fascination there <laughs> yeah like there's a lot of shrek <laughs> it's like every every row has or every third row has a shrek thing on it it's so strange Oh my god. Anyways, what like else the, can we uh, hold on can we the inspiration on? memes? Like this one's <laughs> it's like inspiration for 2022. You all cry if you don't try. The tire. <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god. Like, uh, I'm glad to have a sense of humor. That's that's it's good. Yeah, it's that's good. good. 
too might, many might, stuffy companies out there. Might go ahead and send Kuma to the marketing department tomorrow and let them <laughs> be like, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they'll immediately say, stay in your lane. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's usually how it goes, right? Uh, as somebody working in marketing, can yeah. neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> yeah. Like, I seriously, what is with Shrek in them? Like, I, I don't what get the- it. <laughs> just the the combination of memes even so dumb. I love it. yeah and that one has absolutely nothing to do with tires <laughs> yeah there's no tire reference in there whatsoever uh my favorite part is i think we were already following them <laughs> oh great oh man that that'll pop back up in the feed again yeah that is bizarre i, I will look that at that for sure really bizarre <laughs> Man, uh, all right. So, what what else can we uh, can we touch on before we break here? Um, what Caleb? What else can you tell us? I mean, any new exciting adventure report stuff come in, or anything in your world of automotive shenanigans? We're planning a Northwest trip uh, in June, which should be pretty fun. Uh, hitting a bunch of spots on our way up to Northwest Overland Rally. Uh, Matt and Laura will be driving the Gladiator, the Earth Roamer, and I'll be driving the Gladiator up. Um, that'll be pretty fun. I'm excited to get up there and and do that. They are uh, they're they're headed up to Alaska um, to tuck okay. yuck tuck with the Earth Roamer, which will be Whoa. pretty cool. Excited for them. Um, it's like the dream. So they um, drive that thing that a lot. Cool. It looks like yeah yeah they 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 use it a lot. You know like it, it's it's the perfect vehicle for them because it's like you can work on the road if you want, and it's also just like it's so easy that you can actually like relax. You know we're so busy at work that, you know, finding time to relax is really important. And, and, you know, like getting outdoors is, is key. Um, so I think the earth is just like the perfect vehicle for them with that. Yeah. It seems like it. Um, they took a picture with an earth cruiser and an earth roamer. Yeah. That's, on earth. That's Eli. That's Eli who runs auto car club in, in uh, Scottsdale's uh, earth cruiser. That's so great. We've had Lance on the show who he's the president. Person? He's, something. he's important i know that and australian uh <laughs> i just love it it's in the same photo sorry <laughs> um okay I'm, I'm also just realizing we forgot to talk about me talk about mini mass tracks because i'm still trying to get my hand on a set of them for the <laughs> side by sides they are so cool like the, the minis sense. are like you know i think i think the most people like haven't realized how great the minis truly are you know it's 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 a product that can be easily stored in your car. You know, mm-hmm. it has so many uses and, and to me it's, it's, it's versatile. You also get like the jack space. Like if, if you wanted to have the jack space combo, which is, you know, unlike the normal mini, um, the jack space has a flat bottom that's reinforced more. Um, it has a spot for a high lift jack to go and you can use your jack with it. It's perfect. Um, you know, and if it was me, this is, this is my personal opinion. Like I, I, I would take four minis or two max tracks all day long Yes. Um, because it's like one on each tire is priceless. You can also get, you know, you can get the fixing and linking kit, which links them together. So you could basically have two full size, uh, max tracks, uh, to use. Um, and it's, it's perfect, you know, like they're, it's hard not to take them with you. You know, Richard and Ashley just yeah. took theirs to Saudi Arabia with them. Um, they oh, really? A couple bag. Um, oh, I believe Zen and Sedona also did too. And I think they, I think they donated a set to the uh, the Austria or the the Saudi Arabian Dunes at uh, <laughs> at, at their last rally. I need uh, to get her another set. That's but funny. You know, like it's 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 the perfect travel item. You know, like when you're traveling minimally, um, mm-hmm. and it, it works great. Like it's not just for side by sides and and you know crossovers. It's it's for full size too. You know, Sean Holman carries his with him. Uh, oh, his, Holman runs minis. Yes, yeah, he does. Mm-hmm. He he wanted minis. He, yeah, he wanted minis because he he wanted to save some space in his car. So mm-hmm. that makes well, sense. I mean, the the carrying case makes <clears throat> them so. It's gonna sound dumb. Handy. Yeah, like, literally, like they they store easier. <laughs> and the bag, like no offense to like Mac Jack, like they're rough. Like they're mm-hmm. supposed to oh, be yeah. because you want. To get traction on them but like yes. packing them in the car and in, in that little bag like i yeah that's high on my list too mm-hmm. it is quite good um they're perfect definitely i yeah. also yeah we'll have to get you guys some that would be fantastic i have many things i could use them on <laughs> um, especially as 
the winch on my dad's razor has decided it doesn't want to be a winch anymore. And oh, no. the steel cable on my brother's Can-Am has died and uh, we've been too preoccupied reassembling the razor to get the new cable on. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, definitely could put these things to use, but I, I also just love that you guys are showcasing the picture of it with the bottle jack, because I think in the off-road community, people like kind of poo-poo bottle jacks because it's, it's not a high lift, you know, but mm-hmm. bottle jacks are the way to go. They're so much better. Well, and I, I think, you know, there, there's there's a lot to be said for safety and, and, and you know, most people resort to using a winch before they use Mack tracks, a kinetic rope or anything else. You know, I don't, I don't personally run a winch on my vehicle. Like I, I, I have no need. Um, I don't want to add more weight. I, I'm not like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty OCD and pretty safe often, but a winch is something that I don't want to, to, I guess, have go wrong on my own terms. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, and like, and if I have a winch and I'm obligated to, to get other people out with it. So it's like, you know, max tracks to me are, are like the one thing that that's safe. It's, it's foolproof. Um, and you know, like 99% of the time you're going to get out, like you, you might just have to do a little bit more work. Um, you know, right. often people think that it's, it's a magical thing where you just put it in front of your tire and you get unstuck. No, it has to, it has to <laughs> grip your tire. Like you have to <laughs> it in the tread, like you have to do a little just, bit of work, like, uh, you know, just like, put it in front. It's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, well, there's no magnets that's going to like pull it to your car and like right. get you unstuck. Like it's, you got to do a little, that idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But oh, it's like, you know, in, 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 in some areas, like, yeah, like we've had a max tracks like bridge before of multiple sets because it's like, you know, just to get out is, is needed, you know, like Matt and Laura, both that, you know, they carry four sets of max tracks extremes on the earth roamer because it's like one set for in front of the tires, one set for behind the tires, because what happens if you have no run up and then, you know, you're able to kind of put it in front of the tire and just kind of keep going mm-hmm. um, if you need, you know. There, I have, I have no problem saying that you can do that because I'd rather do that than just get myself in a world of hurt. I feel oh, yeah. like I saw like one of, like, either Rebel year one or two. Like, I felt like it was like Jesse Combs like using the Max tracks as like a bridge across a small they, ravine. Yeah, they did. It was um, they had it on one of the seasons of XO. Is that mm-hmm. what, oh no, so maybe it was gazelle rally it was maybe gazelle it was, yeah. yeah it was gazelle but yeah it was I yeah. Find that. like jesse and her teammate and rochelle and uh i'm blanking on rochelle's co-pilot was it, was it taylor Polly? Uh, i don't i don't want to misspeak <laughs> i'm not sure i'm not sure, <laughs> i'm not sure but yeah they they found this like small ravine that ran as far as they could see in either direction and they end up kind of digging through it and putting mattress there and just using it as a bridge to get across mm-hmm. and then they you know got out and put all the sand back because it's the you know the right thing to do for tread lightly and everything so mm-hmm. yeah, that was pretty cool 100 percent. i can't find it <laughs> i tried if i can't well, get it in the yeah. first 30 seconds yeah i'm pretty quick give up <laughs> yeah yep to my, my the meme page just came back up. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some exploring on that one. I have a lot of questions there. I didn't, There's, I yeah. didn't see that coming out of tonight's show. Like all of us browsing <laughs> track, 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 track memes, uh, yeah. traction memes. Traction. Yeah, but not even really. Like a lot of that shit has nothing to do with anything. Like I don't get the rally car one where it's Shrek, but Shrek, but Shrek and Donkey say Fiona. You guys hear that? No. It decided to thunder. It's been raining all day, oh. but like I guess the thunderstorms are like, hey, 915. We're here. Sweet. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. You. Anyway. So, all right. I am uh I'm Caleb at the clock and no. Yeah. What would you like to plug, Caleb? <laughs> what would I like to plug? Oh man. Um what are you talking? Social media or what? Yeah, it, it's your goal. It's your oyster. Yeah. Anything? So. Yeah. Well, you can, you can I find mean, not, that- not anything. Yeah. You, you, can us, <laughs> you can find us at adventure-imports.com. Um, we've got pretty much anything, you know, for building your overland rig there. We're kind of expanding the website to have some more offerings. We've got lights, you know, bumpers, bed racks, roof racks now, you know, not just max tracks. You can find pretty much anything there. I'm uh, really excited about that. So 
we're on adventure we're on instagram at adventure imports um tiktok adventure imports i'm actually doing pretty well and trying to stay active on tiktok um <laughs> Sorry. Gotta, 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 <laughs> gotta plug it. Gotta keep on with it. Yep. Uh, the 40 year old man in me just died a little bit. <laughs> the, the 25 year old me is doing my job, and that that's what's important. <laughs> See, and at work, similar age person doing the exact same thing for us. As Absolutely. It should be. Absolutely. You know, gotta gotta reach with the next five oh, years. Man. That's the important part. Yeah. Um, that's funny. But uh yeah, it, Instagram adventure imports, TikTok adventure imports. Um, you can follow my personal at Caleb Wallace um for any montero whatever else content i um, I, would, I would just say like there's some pretty pictures there too like it's nice photography like it's quite pretty you do a good job and if you want to find out more about the montero build uh my website calebwallace.com has a pretty intensive uh build breakdown that you can find everything on so cool yeah we uh get we to will... the website yet there could have been more questions i missed could have been you could have asked more questions uh, yeah We'll mention that in our normal round of Montero discussions, that seems to be every freaking week this <laughs> like, as of so, now. So, so you, who, who's, who are the next Montero people then? So Glocker, obviously. Glocker, okay. Yeah. He's not uh, next. We just had him. So no, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know who's so next, like, actually. Four by four. Four, four by four is Mitsubishi based. Andrew Collins was on the list to come back. Yeah. Um, I need to text yeah, him. Yeah, he's like, he lives you. He goes to the town that I'm like, doing imba program through like what about toasty fab uh, uh adam campbell he's got the solid axle swapped uh oh. two and a half on 37s he'd be a great guy he's awesome such an awesome member of the community okay. all right hold on, hold on a second let's wrap up the show and then we'll do this whole yes. list of people yes. 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 <laughs> there's, a, there's a million <laughs> yeah exactly i each week i write down names so <laughs> 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 um all right uh you can rate and review the show Apple Podcasts. I didn't say iTunes this week, except I just said iTunes this week. Um, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. You, Caleb was at Adventure Imports. Imports. It's Merch. all one word, and then at Caleb Wallace, all one word, and then the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. I'm at Overlanding Dad. He's no, not like the one from Friends. You can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Everyday Driver, and the U.S. News and World Report. And if you're interested in adventure van, hit me up. <laughs> shameless self plug at the end there uh yeah uh my kids eat if you buy a van <laughs> that's not 100 percent true but that's what we're gonna do uh, the world so thank you caleb no thank van, you so no much food. thanks for having me on thanks caleb <laughs> appreciate it